Okay, guys. Hold on. I'm just get this started here. Well, hello, folks, and of course, the music serves to uh, shoo people away because every time I play music, everyone leaves. So, but <clears throat> it's our intro, it's a program intro. So, there you have it. Greetings. So, let me just set up here before we get started on our topic and we got uh, some people here on Periscope and there's drought. Yep, time to go drought, time to go. 
Gotta eat your snack. Hold on, let me just uh, bring up the YouTube here. So, uh, yeah, so most, uh, Drought's not been around for a while, so so um, for those of you who haven't been around for a while, most of the activity is now on YouTube. So, so hopefully uh, we got viewers on YouTube uh, tonight. Uh, no, I just want to tell you to go to YouTube. Go to YouTube, Drought. That's where all the action is. <clears throat> So, uh, pure uh, shipping has commenced. Yes, some dude. So, did they talk to you yet, some dude? I said uh, Aspen, Birch, and Chestnut, but, uh, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Whatever I tell them doesn't mean anything until they respond and say, yep, we are shipping it to you. Okay, hold on. I just got to set up all the Wi-Fi's here. It's kind of messed it up. Okay, hold on. Got to like, uh, we, we want a little stability to, throughout the broadcast. So let me just make sure that everything, everything is running. We don't want any surprises later on. First surprise is I dropped my phone. Okay, so. The Zucking Spying Phones. So I dropped my Zucking Spying Phone. Somebody actually asked on YouTube, what is this uh, zucking thing all about? What is all the zuck stuff? It's like, zuck. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, my gosh. <clears throat> Who's zuck? So for those of you who are new to my broadcast, especially from YouTube, uh, just uh, so you know, I invented zuck. The expression, what the zuck, zuck you, zuck you mother zuckers and all that. That came from me from, uh, I started that four years ago. And if you look at the uh, Urban Dictionary, what the zuck came from me. And what is interesting is that the expression zuck is used so heavily, was used so heavily on Periscope because of me. So... So yes, everyone knows my position on Facebook. And the reason I don't really talk about Facebook much on YouTube videos, and I don't say Zuck, is because uh, they'll probably demonetize me. And second, to be honest with you, no one wants to watch my videos about Zuck because they're just, everyone's so attached to Zucking Zuckbook. They don't want to listen to me. So I, I'm setting it aside. I'm setting Zuck aside. So uh, doesn't mean I've changed my opinion about Zuck. He's still a Zucking Zucker. So uh, he, he will still zuck us to no end. So that hasn't changed. But however, I don't get any viewers from it. So I'm not going to uh, spend my energy trying, to, uh, trying to, uh, to push that agenda for now. I'm going to give you a break on the zuck stuff until uh, a later point when I'm so popular it doesn't matter. So, so uh, which is happening very quickly, guys. So, you know... Uh, my channel is uh, finally like blowing up here. So yeah, the channel's blowing up. So uh, it's uh, the number of subscribers coming in is very, very high now. It's uh, I haven't heard any Zucks in the last few minutes. Zuck, Aussie, Nick. Uh, yeah, you haven't heard any uh, Zucking Zucks. You, have, uh, you haven't heard me say Zuck. Can you name one secure apple or few? Can you name me one secure apple or few? Uh, can you name me one secure apple? Yeah, the only secure apple is the one you buy from the market. The one you buy from the market, Junior, that's the only one you can call secure. If you buy it from the market and, you know, you eat it and it's still fresh, that's a secure apple. Other than that, there's no such thing. You think this is secure? So the reason for my topic tonight, Junior, and for everyone else, especially those of you on YouTube, and please uh, make a comment. Uh, like to uh, to talk to you all here. Uh, the, hello, Fritz, and hello. Okay, let me first say hi. Hello, uh, Roberto Blacklight, and there's. Uh, Mr. H and entire Meyer and Starlight, Mama Goo, some dude, and Twitty. Did you change the name, Twitty? And then, uh, and Chuck Who. Hello, Chuck Who with Twist Mint was first. No, entire Meyer was first. 
Dean, hello Dean. Eagle Source AMG, welcome on YouTube and whoever else showed up on YouTube, just talk so that I know. If I if you don't say anything, then I don't know you're there. So say something on YouTube. I feel my heart's going to be broken about the security of an iPhone. Your heart is not broken about that? Oh my gosh. I'm going to uh, we're going to talk about the fact that uh, there are some supposed brands of phones that are secure. Um uh, one uh one was called Cryptol for I believe 5 grand. 5 grand. You want to buy a Cryptol and there was another one uh there were so many of these. <laughs> like a dozen of them, 5 grand and it's a super secure corporate phone it's going to be secure and we're going to tell you how uh nope none of them are none of them are so the closest thing to being secure are are the ones with hardware switches and even those are flawed they're not perfect it's just the only answer we have right now good evening dutch hello uh, spirit in sky star so uh so so uh yes blacklight uh uh roborado thanks sir are you work blacklight uh roborado you're uh working right now night shift dutch mass is on the tube too well of course he is margie usmc yes ma'am you're trying to sell me something i don't need uh yeah I, of course i'm trying to sell you something Time for you to design and engineer a secure phone. Hello, Helen. Uh, I'm not selling your phone, though. So, yeah, I always make products because I'm uh, sick and tired of this uh, the situation here. And, uh, uh, yeah, Libra 5 is a Linux phone, yes. And I'm still waiting for mine, so I'm excited to get one. It's the only one that uh, gives me temporary lapses of security temporary not it's not a permanent solution so but at least it gives me something to work on who are you hiding from hector i'm hiding from you hector i'm hiding from you okay so uh so anyway yep i'm at work at break okay uh dean how secure is proton mail that's not our topic dean but uh, the answer is do not care about proton mail i don't use proton mail and that should make you wonder as somebody who's into cybersecurity in a big way and i don't use proton mail in fact i don't use any email if i can if i use emails my own email uh which is flawed and the other one is gmail which i use uh because uh it's pseudo anonymous other than that i don't really care be good and everything will be good so hector says Hector says that if you're good, the government isn't going to spy on you. And if you're good, Hector's government isn't going to spy on him. That's, that's Hector's philosophy. Is that your philosophy? You guys should read the Snowden book. You, should, it, you know, the Snowden book is very... Uh, I, I thought it was going I, I to be... I thought the Snowden book was going to be boring. And I, it started off kind of like, come on, on with the exciting stuff now, because he was talking about his childhood. And I'm only, I'm only like, you know, 40% into it. And, uh, and then it got to when he uh, became, uh, you know, he, he got to his early 20s and he, uh, he was actually uh, sent to uh, Geneva. And that's where I am right now. And that's got, now it's getting exciting. It's getting exciting because that was in the movie. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm getting excited now. But so far, I've like been underwhelmed, been underwhelmed with, with Snowden's talents and Snowden's abilities. So far, nothing, uh, nothing interesting going on. Everything I type will be used against me. Yeah, Miss Goofy Mocha, yes, and Hector doesn't believe that. Hector said that uh, if you behave and you're good, that uh, you will be uh, you will be okay and yet uh, i behave i've been good all my life and i went to mylife.com and it said my rating was 2.42 my social score was 2.42 and i've lived a pretty good life and i've 
done very, very well and very, very positive things. Uh, you know, some of which have heard of what I've done in my life and they're well-known things. And they're very positive and I've not done anything evil in my life. I, I, I am not, uh, I, I, that has not been my activity. And, and yet, the internet says my social score is 2.42. Okay, and I looked at a bunch of CEOs and they also have like low ratings like that. So you can actually see how screwed up the internet is. And I play piano too. Yes, and I don't make money doing it, but there you go. I do a lot of gigs without pay. Some pay. Not much. Yes. <clears throat> but are you a subversive Aussie, Aussie Nick? Absolutely not. But I do speak out because it's my right. Uh, it's my right as a, you know. As a free citizen to speak out, and and when I think that uh, that uh, governments uh, overreach, it's not my interpretation of the Constitution of the United States, and or the interpretation of the Constitution. Many states, like like the uh, surveillance state of Australia, Australia is one of the most extreme surveillance states because they want to follow the UK's example. So uh, Australia wants to, to uh, actually match the uh, capabilities of the UK. And you actually think that the surveillance state is China and you'd be wrong. You actually think that the surveillance state, the most surveilled people on earth, you think is, are the Chinese. And you would be quite wrong. And Hector says, I'm paranoid. So uh, uh, why are you here, Hector? I don't get it. Why don't you expose yourself on the internet, Hector? Why don't you type in your real name and, and your email address over here so we can, uh, we can really uh, dig all the information about you and then check it out on Facebook? Because I'm sure you're on Facebook, Hector. So, uh, but Hector, Hector, come on, Hector. You will be damaged by this, Hector. If your attitude is that you have nothing to hide, then uh, you will be sucked, as we will learn about today. So, so it's in an expectation of most of you, and a lot of you probably never had this expectation. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, going to tell you right now. Don't you have an expectation that this phone? Uh, hello, cute Colonel. Uh, don't you, uh, you know, have an expectation that this uh, phone should be? private or secure I mean don't they like do secure enclave a a a chip and all the hello Christy 6g so don't they put all that stuff in the phone that you know we want a secure enclave with all this it's all encrypted so if somebody steals your phone and you're a terrorist they can't they can't unlock your phone so they can't unlock a terrorist phone so you're saying that these suckers are safe Aussie Nick and uh, uh, what's what's the name of the other guy uh, that thinks that uh, was asking about the iPhone? You you think you 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 think that you know you paid for this and the expectation is based on what how they talk about it on the internet. They said this is a secure phone. So why do you own a phone? Uh, that's a good question, uh, Hector. That's why I'm using my phone less and I'm using a BlackBerry uh, Bolt. We pay for phone. They control the servers in the phone. Our landlines more private. Uh, private from whom? Uh, Miss Goofy Mocha. Private from whom? If you're talking about the government, no. If you're talking about Google, yes. If you're talking about a hacker, mostly. Not quite, but yeah. Uh, if you're talking about somebody surveilling your phone line, no. Because somebody can plug in and outside your house and listen to you so no it's not nothing is safe now hello adam thompson uh so anyway the reason i'm going to this topic tonight is because uh first of all uh, somebody was asking me about secure phones because he was asking uh you know what secure phones can we get and so he was mentioning some of these brands and there's a, so many of them there's a dozen of them he mentioned like three of them and uh, I can't even remember the other names now. And one of them was uh, Cryptol. And Cryptol sells for, apparently he says uh, 5,000. Although he said you can get it 
you know, retail for thirty-five seventy-five. Okay, so uh, roughly uh, two high-powered uh, desktops, high-powered laptops, at you know, w yeah, uh, no, uh, three comp three high-powered. Uh, Three high-powered des uh, uh, laptops should should buy you one single phone, so so a discount a discounted price of thirty five seventy five for a phone. Okay, and I I uh, and by the way I paid uh, I paid thirteen hundred bucks for this. I checked uh, how much this is worth now on uh, on Amazon, and I guess you can get one for six hundred and fifty bucks. Okay, so this really nice phone. In appearance, at least, is thank you, Twitty. Thank you very much. Is uh, paid thirteen hundred bucks for this. So uh, and forget about what the government. Oh, Hector, I I, uh, I I hope that makes you happy to to do that. Uh, that does not make me happy. So you'll just say I'll uh, I'll attack you, and then you say I'll offer the other cheek. That's what Hector's ph philosophy is. Offer the other cheek. Can't beat the government. Maybe you can't beat your government, Hector. But uh, you know, we 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 have a constitution. <coughs> we have a constitution. There are many bugs on uh, this Zucking iOS. Yes, I can't even copy paste from Brax to uh, something else. Copy paste doesn't work. Really, I paid thirteen hundred bucks for this. Yes, I regret it. Why did I pay thirteen hundred bucks for this? I put in 256 gigabytes of memory because, uh, where are you going, Christy? Uh, because I thought, uh, you know, I need it for recording video and, and apparently not. So, because I don't, you know, I'm trying to get rid of these things. I don't really want to use these too much. So, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I did order a new phone. It's called a Librem 5. And uh, hopefully I'll get it this year. And, and if I get it, I'll show it to you. In fact, here's... Uh, Here's, uh, they released it uh, a couple days ago. So they started shipping it a couple days ago. And, uh, oops, sorry. There it is from the factory. It's kind of chunky. It's a, uh, which, uh, you know, it's kind of chunky. But, you know, I'll take it. I'll take the chunkiness for, for what it offers me. So let me let me just talk to you about why I'm responding to to this question of, of secure phone, because people are actually telling me, oh yeah, there's a secure phone, and this is their approach. So this Cryptol says, what they do with Cryptol is they set up servers servers all over the the world, and um, and uh, they said they have 150 servers, and I presume they mean that you're talking with a cryptol to cryptol phone, kind of like Proton Mail, cryptol to cryptol, and meaning you have to use their app to call, and uh, and then they're going to encrypt the voice using uh, encrypted voice over IP. So they're giving you a service there, and they're going to charge you five grand a phone. And if you're a CEO, you say, hey, you know, this is good. You know, uh, it's uh, it's encrypted. I don't know if it's end-to-end -end encrypted, but uh, you know. Let's uh, assume that uh, it's encrypted enough, just for the sake of this discussion. And so uh, this gentleman was asking me about what about that versus all these other options. Isn't that a secure phone uh, for five grand? And my answer, which will be the consistent answer tonight, is hell sucking no. I don't care how much you pay for the phone. Is it a phone? Then it's not secure. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, I don't care how much you pay for it. Some, some of you will say, I'm going to take a lineage OS, put it on my Android, and now I will have a secure phone. Or some of you will say, I have old Nexus. I'm going to load something called Graphene OS. So, so these are called custom ROMs where you root your Android and you put some new stuff on it. And because these are being sold as secure systems and somehow your phone is going to get secure. And then on and on and on, I hear about all this. And, and the cryptol cost uh, five grand. And, uh, and, you know, when, when I, uh, when I uh, you know, hear about how they're doing it, uh, and then I, I can think of the big flaw in all this, and no one has an answer because they're not thinking about it. So, again, let me repeat something that I was talking about, you know, 
uh, a week ago. Let me just talk to you about something I was talking about a week ago. This phone is not one computer. Okay, so some of you are thinking that this is a phone with, you know, one single computer in here. And uh, so, and it's running iOS and Android. That is not true. Okay, on your phone, there are several CPUs, several CPUs. Uh, let me ask you uh, a question. How many computers or, or, or CPUs are there in your laptop? How about your laptop? How many CPUs do you think are in your laptop? <clears throat> well, at the very least, a laptop has at least three. Maybe more, but at least three. So your, your laptop has the, let's say you have an i9. So you say, I have an Intel i9, and I'm really, you know, I'm just uh, so happy uh, at the performance of my i9 Intel. So that's one CPU, you say. And then uh, there's a lot more. For example, um, what about the GPU? The graphics card itself is, is, a, is a computer, and some of them have multiple cores. So your i9 may have, you know, quad core. You may have a quad core i9 on your computer, and you may have a dual core GPU, and whatever else is on there. And then, then what about this thing called IME? Intel Management Engine, vPro, AMT vPro, IME. Do you know what IME is on uh, an Intel processor? IME is a separate computer they put on your motherboard. So your motherboard has a big CPU and a tiny one. The big CPU is called the i9. They don't talk about the little CPU. The little CPU is called IME. Intel Management Engine. Now, what can this little CPU do? What can this little CPU do? Well, the CPU can run, your com can turn on your computer. The CPU can turn on the computer, can turn on the power, can turn on display, can read your hard drive, can it has access to hard drive and memory. It is able to overwrite the hard drive so you can install a different operating system or load viruses or whatever else you want to do. You can do it from the Intel Management Engine backdoor. And no one knows how to operate this Intel Management Engine backdoor. So hackers are de deliberately trying to find it whole, one hole at a time. But I'm sure somebody has access to the Intel Management Engine one is the corporate world. Whoever gave you your computer has access to IME because they have the software to manage it. And, uh, and of course, what about the three-letter agencies and what do they exactly know about IME and the fact that why do they turn IME off on every computer that is installed at the National Zucking Agency? This is actually stated that they, the, the, uh, the National Zucking Agency disables on the on the motherboard disables ime because they know it's a zucking back door back door people that's what we're going to talk about and that's what the phones are and that's why your phones are in are not secure because your phones have a zucking back door Every single zucking phone, and they found out more and more that this is true. Who made it Intel? And by the way, you're saying, well, I'm not going to use Intel, I'm going to use AMD. Well, AMD copied them and made their own backdoor. So they didn't want Intel to be able to say, oh, only you have a backdoor. Well, we're going to make a backdoor too. So, so AMD made their own backdoor. Who turns it off? No one. So, so a company, you cannot remove the chip, no. So a company called Purism, this was uh, five years ago or so, said uh, we're going to make a new laptop and we're going to find a way to disable the power to IME. We're going to find out a way to disable IME by hardware. Another company did the same. 
and the other company uh, uh, that's doing this is called System76. So these two companies said, we don't like the fact that we have a computer that has a back door and we would like to disable the back door and it's impossible to disable the back door. Uh, I went to uh, my old computer. I have an old uh, ThinkPad and it actually has an option in the BIOS to disable IME. And I was like, uh, are you saying that if I can actually disable IME? Uh, and the actual answer is somebody could re-enable IME remotely. So what the Zuck? Okay. So uh, do we really know how this thing works? It, it's all invisible. No one knows except for some people with access to this, such as three-letter agencies. I don't know how IME works. There's no documentation for this. So what is IME for? Well, IME was supposed to be uh, for corporate users so that if, you, if the corporation gives you a computer then, then, uh, and they want to do tech support, then they can take over the computer and do it. Now, there are other ways to do this already, like you know, running, uh, running some, uh, you know, some uh, go to my PC or something like that. But no, they want full control over, over the device, including the CPU, including everything on it so they can load secret things on it, which, you know, include putting in fake root certificates on there so they can watch your HTTP traffic. So the corporation said, yeah, we want that on there. And so the question is, why are you selling consumer products with AME on it? Why are you selling consumer products with AME on it? So there comes the distrust people because from 2007 on, they've been in, uh, selling Intel processors with a back door and none of you are ducking complaining about it. It doesn't bother most of you. Well, it bothered me. So for the last few years, I make sure that before I buy a Zucking Intel processor, I check to make sure it doesn't have IME. So they have, in the last three years, they have started to release models without IME on it. Uh, an example of a computer with, I, with uh, IME enabled is a Mac. MacBook Pro. I have a uh, MacBook Pro 2014. Yep has IME on it. Fortunately, I don't use the computer much. Okay, has IME on it. So your Mac, therefore, somebody could turn on your computer and access the hard drive. Okay, and how do we turn the sucker off? That means every sucking Mac has IME on it. Suck. So, that's the problem, and that what I'm going to explain to you is the little secret that you did not know is that your phone's also have a back door. It's not called IME. Every single phone has a back door. Hello, Mark, GM, GM Mark. Every single phone has a back door. And it's disgusting, disgusting people. I, I am so disgusted to, to tell you this because there's no solution at the moment. Until I get my Librem 5, I may, when I get my Librem 5, I'll have a partial solution. At the moment, since I don't have a Librem 5, I don't have a solution. There is no solution. Your phone has a back door. Oh, yeah, IME is just for your tech support. Yo, great. <laughs> I, I didn't go to tech support. I have my own house. I don't work for any corporation. And when I did work for the corporation, I own the corporation. Therefore, uh, I don't want to be spied on by my employees. Uh, Rob, the solution is to use open source, open spark on FPGA. Open, uh, uh, open spark on FPGA. Uh, you sure you can do that, uh, Justin? You sure? That is exactly the problem. FPGA is the problem. It may not be F FPGA. FPGA is a specific technology. So just call it microcode. Whatever it is, it serves the function of FGPA, which is, uh, um, uh, what is FPGA again? Uh, uh, gate uh, uh, FGPA. 
somebody can Google that for me. Um, uh, yeah, FPGA. Somebody Google. I it just uh, I forgot what FPGA stands for again. FPGA field. That's what the word I was looking for. Field. Field. Okay. So field programmable gate array. So that's what it is. So what carry will you use for that phone? Uh, Mario, I'm going to use T-Mobile. T-Mobile should work fine. I'm going to stick to T-Mobile. Okay, Rob, I'll be back. Snack break plus, there you go, droughts on a snack break. So anyway, <clears throat> let me just uh, tell you about the zucking backdoor that you weren't told about on this. That We were already getting hints that there's a backdoor on this. And you aren't really believing it. And and here's the truth. There is a back door, and if a phone is a phone, then it has a back door. So what they need to sell are phones that do not have a phone. They need to sell phones. That either you plug it into the wall for the phone service or a phone that uh, um, has Wi-Fi only access without a actual phone cell chip. That's the only way to do it. So let me talk about the, uh, how your phone has a back door. The back door on your phone comes from the baseband. The back door on your phone comes from the baseband. So I don't really care if you're saying you have the most secure phone in the world, like, like a uh, Cryptol. So I'm going to ask you, makers of Cryptol, do you have a baseband? Now, in case you know what a baseband is, the baseband is the Qualcomm chip on your American phone, made by Qualcomm, and it's you can see it, it if you take off your uh, phone. There's a little chip in there, which is called a system on a chip (SOC). So that chip has the entire system on there: CPU, memory, everything. Okay, and that thing is just plugged into your motherboard. It's a little tiny square on there that says Qualcomm on it. And that little thing is a separate computer. It's a separate CPU. Separate CPU. Now, again, I told you this last, last time, so I will, I will uh, explain it to you again. The reason that the system on a chip is in a separate CPU is so they could get FCC approval for the cell uh, license. Because, because it's a cell phone, cell phones need to be licensed by the FCC, and every time you change something, uh, you have to relicense the uh, the uh, the uh, the cell radio since it's a radio. Hello, Beth Hoover. So 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 the 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 um, the uh, radio that you go um, that you attach to any new model of a iPhone. For example, this is an iPhone 10. So if you have an iPhone 11, then you're gonna go. Uh, you know, presumably need to get another approval from uh, from uh, from uh, the FCC for the new phone. The way they avoid that, the way they avoid that is by putting the entire phone, all the cell logic, all of that, on this one chip called the baseband. So this one chip has all the telephone, the uh, this antenna, and all that logic, everything to do with the the the, uh, the radio is on that one chip and there's multiple radios on your phone your phone has the bluetooth radio it has the uh, um it has the uh, wi-fi radio it has the sail radio and then it has some receiver radio such as the gps and then it has some other sensors motion sensor and so on so these are all uh sensors but some of them are so so many of them are specifically radio so this thing emits a lot of RF from different sources. There's the Bluetooth, there's the Wi-Fi, there's the, uh, the cell, and they're operating on different frequencies. So uh, Wi-Fi is at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the 4G LTE will operate in the you know, 900 megahertz uh, uh, in the U.S. And uh, when, you know, and uh, if you're uh, in a different country, it, it could be different. And, um, and uh, the Bluetooth is uh, also in a 2.4 gigahertz. So, so this thing is emitting a lot of signals through all this. Well, 
because the system on a chip is approved by the FCC, it's a separate thing. It has actually has, has its own proprietary uh, uh, computer. Uh, I mean, uh, command commands in there, and it's uh, it's made by the company that makes the chip. In this case, it's Qualcomm. So Qualcomm makes the uh, the baseband. Now Qualcomm pretty much dictates how the chip is going to be made. Because these companies own the patent, so so a cell phone actually is made up of thousands and thousands of patents. There's a thousands, many many thousand patents to make a phone, and uh, half the patents are owned by Qualcomm and MediaTek, and the rest are Apple, Samsung, and so on. So 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 ha- the the cell portion of it. Is what I'm talking about. Not not every part of the phone, but the cell portion of it. So the cell the cell uh, signal, the radio, is controlled by Qualcomm and uh, MediaTek. So they own the patents to to uh, to the cell portion of it. Well, they don't really tell you what to do with that, and you can't really demand that you know they do anything. They kind of make it the way they want, and they sell the chips in the billions, billions of chips. There are for example, this year they're producing a billion new phones, and the billion new phones will have these chips made by MediaTek and Qualcomm, and they're going to have proprietary code on there. Proprietary code on there. Now, the the code from uh, from uh, from uh, let's say Qualcomm is is uh, is a system on a chip. So again, let me explain what that means. That means it has a CPU on there. It has the uh, um, the input output processes in there uh, to send to to the cell, the cell uh, uh, to send power to the antenna to transmit or receive, and that's all the circuitry for all for all the radio stuff in there. It also has an area there for programming, and the programming area there is in in a area called flash memory. Now, what does that mean? Flash memory. Flash memory means it's. Uh, it doesn't require power. When you turn the power off, it's going to stay on the device, and that flash memory is 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 only uh, used by the the baseband. It's not used by the operating system. It's controlled by Qualcomm or MediaTek. They control what goes on in there. Then they also accept data from another element of the phone, which is from the SIM card. So this is where the SIM jacking comes in. So there's a computer on there, and if you want to look at the computer, it comes with a hard drive, and the hard drive on the computer, in this case, the baseband's hard drive is the SIM card. Okay, so again, imagine that on this phone, there's a computer, a separate computer, it's called a baseband, made by Qualcomm or MediaTek. If you're in the US, it's gonna be Qualcomm, and that's gonna be have a different uh, storage area in there, for uh, more stuff, more data, and that data is on the SIM card. Well, as uh, uh, if you haven't heard of uh, what SIM jacking is, I'm going to tell you what SIM jacking is. And uh, apparently, <clears throat> they were wrong. They stated that uh, a week ago, they stated that uh, out of all the phones being made this year, a billion of them uh, will have will be uh, a billion phones could be controlled by the SIM jacking. Uh, wrong. They took that back. They've discovered that every single phone is subject to SIM jacking. Now, what is SIM jacking exactly? So I'll explain it to you, then you start to realize what we're dealing with here. SIM jacking means somebody, someone <clears throat> can send a command to your phone. Someone can send a command from your phone if they know what the command is. I'll tell you who knows what the command is. Somebody can send a command to your phone and basically command it to call you or call somebody else or share a contact list or, uh, or uh, uh, text somebody else, read your text, send text, uh, basically manipulate the baseband portion of your phone, reveal your location, reveal your IMZ, which is your... Uh, Cell cell account number, reveal your IMEI, which is the uh, the um, um, uh, hardware identifier device that identifies your device uniquely. It's like a serial number. 
all of that can be done remotely by a a a, a uh, operator sending commands via silent sms so all they have to do is send sms uh, they will send sms to your phone formatted and crafted in a certain way uh, your 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 uh, phone will not know there's a text because the baseband isn't going to forward it to the uh, OS. The baseband takes that uh, whatever received in the text and it's going to say, oh, this is for me only. I'm not going to show it to iOS or Android. We're not going to show that. We're going to leave it right inside the the baseband chip. So, so, so what actually happens, and this is the funny thing, apparently they made a website to manipulate the baseband. They made a website to manipulate the baseband. And the website is uh, means there's a bunch of, you know, HTML files and I don't know what they use, PHP, whatever, some sort of, uh, I don't know what the interface is. And all of the, uh, the code for accessing the internals of the phone is accessible on a website built into your phone. So your phone actually has a hidden website that someone can access and uh, attack the website and g issue it commands. And the website is actually stored on the SIM card. The website is stored on the SIM card. Hello, Gina. Okay, and then somebody said, well, some phones don't have this kind of SIM card. Wrong. There's another website. So every phone has one of two uh, possible websites. Uh, built into the baseband chip, and you can use either one. So h hold on, Yushti Byte, you're you're interrupting. Hold on, something about uh, uh, so so anyway. <coughs> so so basically someone with a, a, a ability to access this website on your computer can now control your device. And one of the things that they can do, and this is one of the scary things to me, is they can just turn the zucking phone on and dial a phone number. For example, they could call you, they can make the call call you on Google Voice okay, your anonymous Google Voice and call your Google Voice and then you can listen on the Google Voice and then listen into what is being said by the party you just attacked because they're not going to know the phone is on. So they can basically turn this into a microphone. I, I mean, you know, uh, what did Hector say? We don't really care about that. We don't really care about surveillance. Uh, that's not a big deal. I have nothing to hide. Really? So you really want to have this phone in your bedroom be turned on anytime some party wants. Okay, and I'll tell you who the party is. Some party wants to turn on your phone and basically have them listen to you at any time. So it's sitting in your pocket and you're having a, a, a business meeting and somebody wants to uh, listen into the conversation. All they have to know is, in, is let the phone dial in and then you and then get to listen to it and then they're going to go to the phone company say delete that entry on the phone log that is built into every zucking phone because it's in the zucking baseband so you're going to tell me i don't care what zucking security you put on your phone what do you do about the zucking baseband how do you stop that now here's the mysterious part. Here's the mysterious part here. Okay, really, really mysterious. Is who is using SIM jacking? I don't know why Leo Laporte, Steve Gibson talks about SIM jacking and they don't even talk about who the Zuck is using SIM jacking. Certainly not a common hacker. The company, the security company that discovered SIM jacking, and I don't know why you have to discover it. You know, this is something we already knew. Uh, I'll tell you uh, why. But 
if the company uh, uh, said we discovered SIM jacking, but they didn't read what the company said, the company said the the, the one that dis, the, dis, the one that discovered the SIM jacking, they said that the SIM jacking is being used by a government entity, and the SIM jacking hack was created by a private party for that government entity. Wow. We apparently don't care. So basically, our government, we're going to guess it's probably our government, or my go some of you are from a different country, Hector's from a different country, so I'll say my government. Maybe my government likely is the one that did that. And like, likely that the contractor is one of these private parties that we know of, such as, give you an example of a contractor there that are, has already done this, the Harris Corporation. How come the Harris Corporation is able to hack using Stingray, <laughs> hack into your phone and listen in? And police used this without uh, for a while, for many, many years, uh, use this without a warrant. So now they need a warrant to use this, but for many years they did not need the warrant to listen into anyone on their phones. They could do it at will. They could do it at will. They can do it without permission. They can do it uh, because they're having a bad day. They can do it because they suspect you of something. They can do it because you're, uh, you're an ex and I want to spy on my ex. They can do it for any reason they, they, they want, and this is now available to them to spy on your phone. So, so the Harris Corporation has a different methodology. The Harris Corporation Stingray approach is to intercept what happens between your phone and the cell company by putting themselves as a cell tower in the middle. That's how Stingray works. So if you find the target, let me tell you how they find the target. Because in order to, to isolate the target, they have to know the MZ of your phone. So let's say that uh, they want to attack Maggie. Okay, so how do they attack Maggie? Well, they need to know Maggie's MZ. Okay, so they say, okay, we're going to send a, uh, a uh, silent text to, to uh, Maggie's phone, and it will emit its MZ, and then the MZ now will now be uh, uh, tracked. And all they have to do now is, is find where the MZ is. And how do you find the MZ? Well, we know what cell tower area it is because the MZ, the phone reports and says, I'm in cell tower A. I just crossed to cell tower B or I just came from cell tower B and I just, uh, just got into A. So I say, oh, so you're at the boundary of cell tower A and B, which tells us you're roughly in this area. Okay, well, uh, uh, we'll send a small plane or helicopter up in the sky. This is the FBI that has this capability, uh, or ZBI. They can go fly up in the sky, and then they have the little cell tower version of Stingray. And then they'll sit there and say, uh, anyone with this MZ there? And Maggie's phone is going to say, I'm here. I have that MZ. That's me. So now they know the area. Now they send a... Uh, a vehicle with a MZ suitcase in there, I mean a uh, Stingray suitcase in the car, in the back, and then they say, okay, we're gonna go, uh, uh, we now have the MZ, now we're gonna go uh, attack the MZ uh, and be a man in the middle, and then intercept the, the traffic, and we're gonna know what Maggie's doing on texting uh, on the internet, and what she's posting on, on Facebook, and on and on and on. Uh, this was actually done in so many cases, and, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation actually, uh, 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 you know, ma made a big stink about about this because they used it openly on the uh, the Dakota Dakota oil pipeline protest. They were actually using uh, Stingray to attack the protesters in there. They were actually intercepting their social media. Uh, uh, posts so that was detected and that's why they were saying that this is by the EFF.org so they use this all the time and they used it against uh, Michael Cohen they did they did they did uh, get a uh, get a uh, 
warrant for that because now you need a warrant. But back then, during the Obama administration time, you didn't need a warrant. Now you do. So, so anyway, uh, so the, the, uh, the, uh, that's interception of the message using radio, meaning you, you put yourself in the middle of, of the cell tower and the phone, and then you in, intercept with the Stingray thing. And Stingray, uh, Stingray uh, you know, is, is uh, made by Harris Corporation, and it's all, all uh, like hidden stuff. They don't want to talk about it. The, the uh, law enforcement agencies that use Stingray are bound by contract not to talk about Stingray. So they can't talk about it, but every hacker in the world knows about Stingray and know how to build Stingray. I happen to know how to build Stingray myself. So I have a device that could, I could emulate a Stingray. In fact, I was going to, and then I said, oh, I've got other things to do. But, uh, but I have a device that I can use to emulate Stingray. So, so attacking from that end is one thing. But it's different from what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about today is the back door is actually built into this. This back door has been attacked before. And I don't know why... All these experts are not drawing the connection between the old way of attacking your phone and the new way. So let me just explain this again. There was a 60 Minutes show some years back, three years ago maybe, and they were talking about an attack on the phone where they demonstrated how they can do almost exactly the same things that you can do with SIM jacking, uh, like, you know, intercept your phone data and phone calls and texts and so on and call for you and so on. And basically, uh, <coughs> attack your phone uh, from the phone company. You don't even have to get near the phone. And they used this against, you know, in fact, in the 60 Minutes case, they were showing how this can be used against government officials. So you can intercept the phone and spy on them and do things on the phone. And it's done through the phone network using something called SS7. So, so that's, the, uh, that's the attack. It's called the SS7 attack. SS7 is actually not an attack. SS7 is a channel. So if you're, if you're sending a, uh, if you're using your phone for any purpose, uh, for example, you're sending data like internet data so that goes in one trunk, in a big trunk, and there's some control traffic that's going on for the phone. It goes on on another line, and that line is called SS7. So every time your phone does anything, it sends, it transmits on two channels. Channel one, send data. Channel two, SS7, control metadata. And uh, that's where you have the switching and, you know, dialing and all those functions are done at the SS7 layer. The SS7 uh, network attack can actually control your phone through SS7. Now, what is interesting about all the SIM jacking things are, which is attacking your phone, not through the network of the uh, phone company, but through SMS, is there, they seem to be intersecting to the, the same behavior, which tells me it's all the same sort of code. That means that the baseband is responding to input from any source. It could be on the network using the SS7 protocol or the SS7 channel, or it could be coming in from, from uh, uh, SMS. And it just has to be formatted in a certain way. So they built this back door into every sucking phone. That doesn't bother you that your phone can be turned on. Okay? Your phone can be turned on without your knowledge. And someone can eavesdrop on anything you do with your phone, your texts. That somebody can eaves eavesdrop and here's the worst part. It seems to me that this, the party that is likely associated with this activity is not a sucking hacker. It is a government, likely our government. I mean, I find that really, really offensive that now we don't have any way to protect ourselves and get some privacy with our protection from the sucking Fourth Amendment because this device, this device, does not afford us any rights to the Fourth Amendment. They can turn it on at will. So when somebody asks me, can you have a secure phone? 
Can you have a phone that's secure? Well, my first question is, what did you do about the sucking bass band? Did you make your own bass band? How do you Zaki make your own bass band when it's covered by patents? The reason that no one can write their own bass band is because it's controlled by patents by Qualcomm and MediaTek. And so nobody can make another bass band without paying uh, Qualcomm and MediaTek. And, and then you have to redesign it in such volume that they're willing to you know, make a special chip for you. Uh, because they sell the chips in the billions. They sell billions of the same sucking chip every year. Base band, Maggie. So, again, to repeat, for those of you who came late like Maggie, wasn't paying attention, let me repeat again. Your, com your phone has several computers on here, several CPUs on this phone. Your normal CPU, there's a GPU, graphic processing unit, that handles all the graphics on there. And then there's a, another CPU, there are many other CPUs on there, but I'm just talking about the ones that we're concentrating on tonight. But the one CPU that we're concerned about is called the baseband or the cell baseband. It's basically the cell chip. So Maggie, when I say baseband, I'm referring to, I didn't know what you call that. I call it the, uh, you know, the cell, the cell chip, but apparently there's an official name for it. It's called the baseband. So the baseband, you know, is, is made by only a couple of manufacturers and, uh, and those manufacturers put in their code on there. Now, what's interesting about the baseband is it's, it has not only, uh, an area that they can receive commands from, which is uh, their website, which is on the SIM card. So they can put data on the SIM card. So each carrier can give you a SIM card and they put their own data on the SIM card, which has their command structure, kind of like putting a hard drive. So their hard drive is in the SIM card. So you plug in a SIM card and then that is the hard drive that has all their stuff. The IMZ. Then the, it also has the uh, the uh, um, the website that can be controlled. All of those controls are programmed into the to the uh, to the SIM card. In addition, the the baseband itself has its own flash memory, and that flash memory is similar to something called FPGA, or uh, the the term is uh, field programmable programmable gate array, which means flash memory. Uh, I have a device with FPGA. I have a transmitter with FP. I have a transmitter receiver with FPGA, and you can actually control and change the the contents of the uh, the uh, the baseband, the commands, by uh, by saying upload a new FPGA, meaning a binary file with all the the ROM. It's like the ROM, read only memory. So the command structure for like the BIOS of your computer, if you, you know, if you want to like load a new BIOS on your computer, this is how they do it. They say load a something into this area, uh, which is similar to the way it's done uh, with a chip called FPGA. Okay, field programmable gate array. So I can load in no software. So, so, uh, so Maggie, uh, do you ever get the, uh, you don't have an iPhone though, Maggie. You, don't, you, you have an Android, right? So if you have, if you have, if you have an iPhone, you will get the message carrier update. Now, what is that carrier update? So carrier update updates the programming on the baseband. So they can change the code on the baseband and send it to you using the carrier update which means they can control and send the programming because they always want to send a new command. So here's the problem. So all of our phones apparently has all of these controls that can be controlled by, by a c external party, which are, by the way, protected by law. You, you can't really go in there and, and hack the baseband because uh, if you're like Kevin Mitnick that tried to hack those kinds of things, you go to jail. So if you want to hack the baseband, you're going to go to jail. So they basically locked it down 
and protected themselves and said, okay, we're going to lock you down from ever touching the baseband, but the baseband has a back door. And you, citizen, this is the 1984 Big Brother government. You don't have a say in it. You have a zucking back door and stop moaning about it. That's it. Buy your, enjoy your zucking iOS and Android and don't zuck and complain because we're just going to you, give you a new phone every year and it will always have a back door and you don't have any say in it. You have your zucking back door. Very, very frustrating, folks. Very, very frustrating. And, and I, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, my frustration is that there's no solution. There is no answer to the simjacking. There is no way to stop the back door. Yes, uh, that's what a back door is, Maggie. It's a programmable area that you can send commands to the baseband chip, which apparently what simjacking is simjacking is sending commands to the chip via it's called silent sms they can, they can send secret uh, un, un, uh, unsolicited sms messages to your phone which will actually make your phone the baseband portion of wake up and do things without your control as if you're touching the screen and dialing and texting and all that that can happen through the baseband Yes, Annie, this is, this is scary to me. I mean, you know, they don't like you, especially me. I mean, you know, obviously three-letter agencies don't like me, and then they're going to say, oh, gosh, let's go turn on a Zucking phone and listen in. You know, I protect my, my systems. You know, I have various protections here in, in, in my network and so on. I'm very, like, uh, uh, fastidious about you know, how I set up my computer and, and, you know, everything around this house. And then I've discovered this whole, there's no way to plug it in. There's no way to plug it. There's no, the only way to plug the baseband is to not use the phone. Turn off the power. So it, it, it's really maddening because some people are spending thousands like this crypto phone that you're spending what five thousand dollars for you buy a crypto phone and you say oh i'm gonna pay five thousand hello mecca screen five thousand dollars on this phone to, so i can have a secure phone running some version of android that's supposedly hardened and it's like can you harden the baseband no so what is the solution to this baseband problem the only solution and it's not a complete solution, is to, is to use a Librem 5. <laughs> Huge D-Byte. Always, uh, don't swear uh, here, Huge D-Byte. Come on, my friend. So I, I do encryption uh, every day, uh, you know, uh, great gold. I do, I do all the encryption, but... Uh, what are you going to do in a situation where they attack you from another front? Yes, you haven't been on Mecca's Queen from New Jersey. Who is Hector? Hector's on, uh, on uh, Periscope. So uh, why is uh, why is this Librem five? Why is Librem five different? Well, it's only different uh, in the sense that you can turn off the power to the baseband while leaving the phone on. So this is the since let's say that I'm afraid of you know baseband kind of attacks uh, at certain. Yes, you are from New Jersey. Uh, uh, do we need to announce your real name here too, uh, which you did announce one time? Um, so the baseband, the baseband uh, can be turned off on a Librem Five and hopefully on a on a Pine phone. So if you uh, if you turn off the switch, you can still use your phone because it has Wi-Fi. Uh, you can still access the internet and do all that. You can you know you can uh, still send messages and so on, but you can turn off the phone portion. In which case then. If you're not expecting a phone call, 
Yeah, Lourdes. Yes, I forgot already. <laughs> Mecca Queen. Yes, I already forgot. So now you made me remember. So Mecca Queen is Lourdes. So, so, um, uh, hugely by, oh, you're finally waking up. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> so, uh, so anyway, the, the, uh, the problem that I'm, that I'm having here is how I would use a Librem 5, which I hope to get soon. And then I can, uh, I can uh, you know, not fear a simjacking attack. How do you do it if you can't turn off the phone? Well, the answer obviously is uh, turn off the power. But uh, how far does the simjacking go? Does it go as far back as a BlackBerry Bold? 2011 I honestly don't know how far the baseband had this code we're gonna have to assume it's been there a while Maggie watch my videos come on Maggie you can't like uh, do it from a quick visit you got to watch my video that means you're not watching my videos so so uh, uh, I don't even know if a BlackBerry Bold 9900 is secure from simjacking. I I actually don't know. So, yes, we know that Google and Apple can't track you on a BlackBerry Bold. So, yeah, the attack from Google and Apple spying on you. That's not going to happen. Uh, can the government spy on you? from a BlackBerry Bold? Yes, from multiple fronts. They can use Stingray. They can use SimJack. So we're going to assume they can do SimJacking. They can do SS7. So they can spy on all the phone portions. They basically have control of every zucking phone in the world. Sucked up. Every zucking phone in the world. Now, how does the Librem 5 work? If I turn off the switch, there's no power. I can still use the phone. I can play games. I can do Wi-Fi. I can go go uh, visit Zuckbook. I hope not. But I can do all that because I turn off the baseband. So the, with the baseband off, obviously the, <laughs> they can't send you a text. And some of you will say, well, I don't like that. They can't send me. I, I live for these texts. Uh, I don't know, guys. I mean, if I'm having a private conversation, and uh, I can at least turn off the thing because I know that uh, I don't want them spying on me when, when I don't expect it. And by the way, I don't even answer my phone. If any of you, you know, try to call me on the phone, I will never answer it. <laughs> I do not answer my phone. So to me, it doesn't matter to me if I turn it off because I'm going to say, well, you know, reach me and Brax.me. Just send me a message there and offline. I don't have to have the baseband on. I would love to be able to use the phone and not have the baseband on. You are at the fork and road. So Kelp, Kelp, is, uh, uh, Kelp is such a lost individual. So he's saying, okay, uh, he's basically telling all of you, accept it. This is the way it is. My job is finally done. <laughs> huge D bite is uh, is always out. Talk to me. Talk to me uh, offline. Huge D bite. You're you're my buddy. I I love talking to you. You're always like educating me. Huge D bite is uh, is uh, very uh, critical to my education. <clears throat> By the way, I learned a lot from you guys. If, if you see the kind of questions I get from uh, YouTube, you'll, you'll see that I am learning from you. Uh, I may know certain things, and then some of you will bring up, you know, what about this, what about that? And then I research it, then I learn about that and say, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And then I, I, I can attack any technical issue with the knowledge I have and, and then make an analysis to see if it works or not. For that reason, that's why I said when somebody asks me, can you get a secure phone? And the answer is, how? How do you have a secure phone? If you are, if you're able, uh, if you're able to be attacked, you know, without your knowing, 
using simjacking, then how, how are you going to do it? Now, let me just tell you, though, that it depends on the threat. So, so just you, under, you understand, simjacking is not an attack that I'm expecting from a hacker. SS7 is not an attack I can expect from a normal hacker. Uh, these attacks are likely to come from governments. So, three-letter agencies in this country and four-letter agencies in some other countries. So, you know, uh, uh, how you constantly learn new stuff and report uh, th Hawaii Dealer, that's, you know, I don't know everything, but uh, if I research it, I'll know what the answer is. So, so th the thing about the simjacking attack, and, and maybe here Kelp is, uh, that's why I said Kelp doesn't care about simjacking, it's because likely a simjacking attack is going to come from a government. So if you're a, uh, you know, if you're a, uh, vocal political voice you should worry now i'm not into politics so i don't really uh you know <clears throat> that's not my concern my concern is more about security you know privacy which is what i talk about here i want each one of you on whatever it is that you're trying to do on the internet to get uh, to get uh, to get some privacy and uh because it's my expectation, but apparently the government doesn't have a law that says you deserve any privacy because you don't. Pegasus from Israel. What is Pegasus? Is that like some uh, something like uh, prism and muscular and what is it? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> there's so many of these names. I've lost track of all of them. <laughs> Yeah, I'm reading the Snowden book now, so I'll, I'll remember all different names of all these programs. All different uh, name of all these programs. So uh, be before before I go on, I'm going to take a uh, a uh, short break to show you a uh, an ad. Okay, so uh, um, that shows you this product that I'm making that will be available in October. And for the first time, you will see the security camera. So this is the security camera. Can you believe I made this? So th these are all built here. And uh, this is a full computer. The description and what this does is is uh, on uh, on my store at rob.brax.me. It's a pretty impressive camera. I've had a lot of security cameras and, and I've always found fault in them. So I wanna make sure that I have a camera that does not have those flaws. This one uh, does motion uh, detection and true motion detection there's the infrared and um, and this one uh, uh, as you can see is individually made here we individually solder this and do all that and all the parts uh, made in the USA no spying by ring no spying by Amazon this is your data the data goes in the flash drive that's right on the device and resolution is HD quality. Full motion HD quality. There it comes with 32 gigabytes of, of uh, flash storage right in the device. It comes with power over Ethernet. It's pretty, uh, you know, snazzy device because it has everything on it. And uh, in a, as you can see, in a weatherproof case. So, so all you do is uh, when you install your Ethernet in there, that's also where the power comes from. Just tape it, tape it there. So uh, 
So HD quality. Now I, I actually can do uh, 1080p, but the the problem with it is uh, it's too slow. The CPU slows down at 1080p. So so none of the none of our competitors do 1080p. Uh, I can actually go to 4K. I have I have a 4K. It's going to be expensive. So I have a 4K example of this, but I'm not. I, I don't think that's uh, you know that's appropriate at this time to release because it would be costly. So so but I that's that is available. There is a, a way to actually go 4K. But as you can see here, uh, we did a uh, very nice job. It's uh, well done. You know this is not uh, a low level product, and this is available from the store. So this is the first time I've actually shown you one. So this is mounted around my house right now. So I have several of these mounted around my house. Uh, then, of course, this one I've shown many times. And this one is the radar, which was in that video. So this is the radar, and all you do is it sets it's an alarm, and just press the button before alarm you walk out the house. The elves are hard at work, yes. This is a nice Christmas present. And that gives you 40 seconds to walk out, and then uh, uh, it's gonna keep beeping, uh, uh, one beep, two beep, three beeps, and then after that there's 10 more seconds, and then it's on. Okay, that's two beeps. You can see the green light uh, uh, moving there. So these are all at rob.brax.me is the name of my store. Rob.brax.me, which is on Brax.me website. Okay, it's going to turn on. Okay, the alarm is on, and it's there. You can see the red light. If it detects any kind of motion, it's going to set the alarm. So alarm. Alert. that sends a notification on my phone, and then you can have it do reset, resets again, uh, in depending what time. And, and then uh, you can listen in again. So uh, there's no need for any kind of monitoring subscription since it only goes to you. So you can decide if that's an important alert or not. You can block the time and say, alert me only from from uh, 2 a.m. to, uh, you know, whatever. You put a time slot. Uh, so that's the second product that's going to be available in the store. The reason I made these is because I don't want you to be spied on by Ring. In case you didn't know, Ring is now part of the surveillance infrastructure of th of the uh, uh, agencies, the law enforcement agencies. They're actually given access to whatever is shown on Ring can be accessed by the police and law enforcement and three-letter agencies. They're now sharing the data that's on those uh, Ring uh, systems uh, to anyone. Uh, so they basically a surveillance camera mounted on your door mounted in every home and they want everyone to have ring so they can go check out the neighborhood and see whatever's who's walking in and out at any point so that's why I don't want you to install ring I that's why I'm building these systems to make sure we have an alternative especially for me I built these for me and and now I'm offering it to you now this one is the Brax Wi-Fi now what is this this is a a uh, this is a Tor router, VPN router. It's called Brax Wi-Fi. And this is your router. It can route your traffic directly to the VPN. You do not have to install a VPN on any device. And you can have unlimited number of people access the VPN through this. And uh, your guests, anyone who comes to your house will not be revealing your IP address and damaging you by revealing your location through that IP address. Uh, by by uh, having this, okay. So, so uh, great goal is just a case. Yours is just a school. It just doesn't have the case. So, the new one comes with the new case. Yes. So, uh, all of these are controlled by a web interface instead of the way it was used to before. Before you control them by SSH. These are all now controlled by web interface. So. Uh, we can ship this to you in yellow. If you want this in yellow, I can have it in yellow. Or white. Whatever you want. These are individually printed. They are hand assembled here, yes. 
These are not made in China. They are they are made here in the Zucking US of A. Handmade by us here. Handmade. M much of this passes through my hands and you can actually see me soldering these things. So the circuit boards in here are individually soldered in here. Okay, so we, we do all the work in here. So that uh, that uh, is the uh, alarm. This is the camera. So you see the camera and there's an example of the HD video. So this is on a computer, but you can see the same on a phone. And uh, you have the, uh, the option of having the video sent to the cloud or not. So uh, uh, if you, if you uh, in the normal way, you just get the alarms on the cloud and then you come home to go see the actual video. So these are all gonna be available uh, starting uh, uh, in October and, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully ready for you to wrap in packages for your Christmas Christmas and holiday uh, holiday uh, gift giving. So uh, please consider these gifts and it also supports the program here. And, uh, and so yes, and that's what that ad is and, and uh, I'll run it again later. So you know, I'll run it in the background. So I hope you think that's cool. So that's uh, uh, obviously I also have the Bytes VPN, and then for those of you who are on YouTube and you say, well, how do we, uh, you know, how we we chat with this this guy and this, the all these people here on on this channel because there's so many. Uh, I I do have thirty thousand followers on uh, on Periscope. How do we all chat? We we all chat on my app Brax.me Brax.me. Uh, is where it's an app that I made and that's where we all meet up and talk so if you want to meet up and talk uh, you don't need to to talk by leaving comments on YouTube which is also cool but if you want a little bit more privacy you can leave comments on Brax on me and discuss with everyone else there and I'm always there and there's some open communities where we can all discuss everything and at least whatever you do there is pseudo anonymous we do not uh, uh, know anything about you and uh, nothing is, uh, and everything is encrypted if you have a private conversation. And if you have a public conversation, it's still not gonna go show up on Google and anything because we don't know who you are anyway. So nothing there can go to Google. So Brax.me is my platform. It's not a platform that I make money from, but uh, it's a platform that I've had for a while. Uh, uh, I think I'm getting access to Restore 66 Bug for Christmas. Come on, you need a, you have a big house, Maggie. Get get a zucking alarm system. Zuck. Put a camera up in front and you know, put an alarm system. Somebody asked me if you can mount this on a window. And the answer is look how light this is. This is very light. So there's a mount there. That's a standard camera mount, which is uh one fourth inch. Uh which you can often match with some GoPro uh accessories. So you can actually uh play with mounting that and then maybe uh, do a suction cup on the wall and you can probably mount this in some way uh, with suction cups. I haven't figured out, you know, like how to do it on the window, uh, but I'm sure you can figure it out. So so anyway, uh, uh, and this, has, uh, this is a full uh, day night with mechanical IR filter and you need uh, external illuminators, IR illuminators to get like really good lighting. This is wide angle lens, 170 degree range uh, access to, to, you know, so in, in my case, I can pretty much see the entire side of the house with one of these. So uh, one of these in the front, one of these in the back, and you can see everything. So combined with the, with this, you got full protection and you don't need to uh, pay anyone for a service like 40 bucks a month 
to pay to ADT and whoever else, which I used to do. I paid all these companies, all this Spectrum and whatever, and you don't need to do that. Okay, so Rick, watching other tech YouTubes push ring cameras makes me cringe. Wish they'd do more privacy content like you, but I guess that doesn't pay the big bucks. Thank you, Rick. You know, uh, I started making these products only because of what I'm seeing out there. I used to just recommend uh, a VPN called uh, Private Internet Access, PIA. And, and then they started to fail me. And so a year ago, I said, uh, Zach, you know, why am I recommending a company that's going to fail us in a VPN? I want a better VPN than this. So I made my own VPN. That's what VitVPN.com is. So I made, uh, uh, you've seen a similar security system on Amazon. Come on, Maggie. You've seen another spy system on Amazon. Ring is owned by Amazon, Maggie. Ring is owned by Amazon. You Yeah. Go install a spy system in your house. They really want your videos to show up in a central database. Is that your goal? Come on. Yeah. So, goodness. Educate yourself, Maggie. Do, don't say statements like that. That, uh, you know, it should make you cringe. Like Rick, Rick cringe when, you know, cringes when you, you say this. So, yeah, this is your data. This is not data going to Amazon. This is your data. It's your camera shots that should not be going anyplace else. It's making the community safer. Let's go spy on everyone. Let's put a camera in Kelp's bathroom because he thinks it's making the community safer. I, I am almost like, uh, I don't even react to you, Kelp. Your, your, uh, your thought process is so, uh, I don't know. Should live in a communist country. Yes, Maggie, I know that. So, uh, so anyway, so and 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 you can see how everyone you know defends some of this technology like iPhones and all this, and and you know you're you're thinking you know uh, YouTubers will go and say anything, so they can make a buck, and. I, I will not do that. I, I will not, uh, you know, if I'm recommending something, it's because I think it's better for you than the alternative. And if there were alternatives, I'll just push the alternative. Uh, uh, I can get a cut from anything that I push, you know, on, on my program. And uh, why don't I do it? Because they're a fail. Okay? So if I find something that's good, like I was recommending, for example, uh, a solar panel now why am I recommending that solar panel because it's a great bargain and it works well so there I don't need to go you know contract with somebody else and make a solar panel I mean it was done well so there you can see me you know talking about the products that rock the Rockwell uh, solar panel is truly a high quality solar panel I tested it and I was like surprised with the results so uh, ring is bad news yes seriously bad news so so there you go anyway so th back to our topic returning to the topic at hand by the way did anyone get did, did you like what i showed you are these uh are these cool things anybody uh you know gonna be interested in this when this comes out in a couple of weeks <laughs> if not let me know i'll stop showing it to you if you think it's boring just tell me i don't want to see that that's nonsense if it's interesting enough, uh, uh, you know, please let me know and get me encouraged because you know we're we're, uh, we're we only uh, we're only building some. Yeah, I I haven't done a a commercial for Byte VPN. You will order at some point. So yes, yeah, so so yeah, plan on it for Christmas, guys. We uh, we uh, we're only making so many. These are handmade, so we can't you know we can't sell a lot of them because. It's handmade. I think that stuff is cool, but I'm broke. <laughs> Rick is broke. We're gonna have to make you uh, money, Rick. We need we need to get you uh, get you making money. So maybe you should do YouTube videos and lose money like I am. So anyway, so back to the question: Could you get a phone that's uh, secure? Well, again, uh, it depends on who the opposition is. If you're 
trying to say, can you protect yourself from the government? The answer is no. If the uh, if you are working for the government, then I think the secure phones will work. Can you juggle? Maggie says, Rick, can you juggle? <laughs> Rick is a teacher, as you can see, Maggie. A very good profession that you should learn from. So I'm just waiting on shipping date. So yes, I will. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, we're just obviously the the units themselves are ready, and we we have them partially assembled. Uh, when we have them, you know, when when uh, they're ready for shipping, uh, we need like a day to assemble it. So it's partially assembled. If you order it, take a day to do the final assembly, then we ship it. So uh, we, we don't have it pre-made because they have to be individually made. So, uh, but there, you know, we, we have, we already have enough of this uh, to start. So, so I guess it goes to credibility. You say no phone is secure, yet you have one. Surveillance is bad. You say, uh, Kelp, uh, no, I'm, unlike you, unlike you, Kelp, Unlike you, Kelp, I actually ordered a Librem 5 phone. So, uh, you, uh, <laughs> nice vocals. Uh, I'm doing something about it. I'm getting a Librem 5. I have a uh, Blackberry Bolt that I carry around instead of this sucker here. This can stay home. They already know where I live, so not going to change anything, but these are all on VPNs. So, uh, yeah. So we're all uh, we're all ready. What? Okay. So uh, uh, so can you get so again? So the question is: Could you have? Uh, how much is it going to set you back? What the Librem Five is seven hundred bucks. I look healthy. I actually have a secure system. Can you just explain yours to me, uh, Maggie? The the. Uh, the Librem Five is uh, uh, six ninety nine plus tax. I just demoed it to you, Maggie. Uh, if you go to Rob dot me, you'll actually see a description of each one, and why they're different. So uh, uh, these are very high quality. That like the camera is very very high quality. So this is one of the best you can get. I made sure. This, of course, is different because this is a radar. So one of these can cover a large area. Like this room here is very large, right? I'm in one big room. Uh, so this room itself here is, uh, I don't know how big this would be. This is at least, uh, I don't know, maybe just this one room alone is probably 600 square feet. So, so this one alarm can cover the room and all the windows and all the doors can you make a radar detector this is a radar not a radar detector okay uh, are the hardware drivers for Libreform open source uh, which phone are we talking about are you talking about the Librem Uh, I believe the answer is no. Would a radar detector d detect this device? I'm going to show you something that's really interesting. I, I, I want to... I want to... Uh, I want to uh, this was on my video. And I'm just going to run this next to me here. And you just take a glance at it while I'm talking. Okay. So what, what you're seeing here is a app I made for Linux. I've never done a Linux app before, so I made a little app on Linux. Uh, and, uh, and this app is very interesting because, as you can see here, it's sniffing the network, kind of like Wireshark. It has a Wireshark capability. I made this app. So it's tracking the network. So I'm just going to tell you what it's doing right now. It, it's very fascinating what I'm doing here. I don't want to know what I'm going to do with this. And there it's uh, spotting the list of uh, 
of devices on the network. And I actually improved this already. This is much more detailed now. And uh, I can have more information that gathered. And then it can uh, also track the traffic and see what DNS, where you're going on, what websites you're going on the, uh, uh, hold on, uh, uh, I was testing the DNS. Okay, and th this is where it tracks every website that's been been visited by any app running on your on your device, and then you can check each one to see if there's a man in the middle. So this is a very sophisticated little app I built. So there, it can check to see if there's a man in the middle using certificates or DNS spoofing. Now, you're going to see something here uh, that I did, and, and I can't demo uh, it on this video, but uh, I demoed it live to somebody, and uh, I'll show you in a second. It's, <laughs> uh, do you dye, your, do I dye my hair? Why would I dye my hair? Do I have any reason to dye my hair? Are you asking me... Uh, you know where my white hairs are? My white hairs are on there, yes, but I guess there's uh, not enough to be seen. Quick slacking off. Okay, so so uh, now watch this, jamming. Watch that. You see that jamming? Okay, do, do you know what I just showed you there? I demonstrated that live. I just demonstrated that live, and uh, I, I, uh, so I had a side computer, and then I attacked the computer, and I jammed it, and suddenly it stopped working. And uh, that's pretty impressive. Now, will I distribute this app? I don't know because you know it's it's made to run on Linux. So anyone with a Linux app, like Linux phone, like a Librem or even a uh, Librem or even any Linux computer could hack you with that app, and I'm like saying mm, maybe I shouldn't distribute this. I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not certain I should even make this available to anyone. But it's uh, it's pretty incredible what I've showed you there, because of the ease. You know, this is nothing new. Any hacker knows how to do this. This is you know basic 101 Kali Linux stuff. But to put it in an app. It's kind of fascinating because it's like a nice tool. I don't have to run, I don't, uh, I don't have to run, uh, uh, you know, Wireshark or anything. I, I just, you know, scan on my computer, check all the devices on the network, and say, I'm gonna, what are these devices? And then I'm gonna go attack that guy. So, uh, so I don't know if I should distribute it because it's an attack. But I, in, a, in a way. In a way, uh, uh, I have Linux. Can I have the app? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just uh, you know showing you what I can do because some of you don't think I can really do this. So uh, breaking the law. So uh, this thing seems like it's nearly a firewall plus. Mad cow, this is beyond firewall. This is beyond firewall. This can actually detect if there's a hacker in your area. So if if uh, if one of you start, says I'm gonna go you know attack your Wi-Fi and and attack you at your house, I'm that software can not only spot you but can jam you. It, that, so I'm just showing you that I can. It's something that you know I I don't know if uh, I I uh, want to distribute it, but it just shows you that I can do it. If any of you doubt that I can do it, there you go. I can't figure which of the three to five methods you're using. I can't figure which of the, what methods do you need to know, Mad Cow? There are many methods. Uh, it, um, because of the limitations of device drivers on a phone, I'm gonna just, I'm using a normal Wi-Fi. Lenny PR. So for example, uh, if I have a separate Wi-Fi card with monitor mode, I can do the next step, which is what I wanna do, but I don't think it'll run on the phone. And this is to actually track anyone that approaches my house, even if they're not on my network, 
and track their MAC addresses. I told you I was going to make that and say, I'm going to go uh, sit with a Raspberry Pi, sit in a car at Walmart and see, uh, track the MAC addresses of anyone who walks by me. Uh, jamming them, stop from getting their hands dirty, let them in, then you have grounds for the scalp. So if you want to distribute it, let me know. I like doing penetration testing on my own network. Uh, some dude, it's pretty fun though. You see what, uh, uh, you can see what I can do some dude. It's uh, pretty fun. I mean, it's uh, not that I can do the hack, but the fact that I can put on a tiny little app that I just spent, uh, spent uh, a few days working on. I, I only did that, you know, I had to learn how to make the graphics for Linux. And then uh, a few days to go f do the actual penetration stuff on the uh, network. It should be okay to just do monitor mode. Uh, yeah, uh, monitor mode requires compatible hardware. So you can't run it on a phone. Because you're not going to have a driver for it. So that's the problem. Device drivers. I could run it on a Raspberry Pi. I can't run it on a phone because there's no drivers. It's a driver problem. You have Linux. Kelp does not love privacy. Kelp loves to to uh, make it. Why don't Kelp, why don't you tell us your real name and all that? I said, you don't really care. I'm speaking third person right now. We are not even Halloween and I saw Christmas treats on Costco. Use the Liberum 5. No, the, uh, 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 Donnie. The Librem 5 will have a device driver problem. I don't know if the, their existing Wi-Fi will have monitor mode. So if, the, if, the, uh, if their Wi-Fi doesn't support monitor mode, I can't do monitor mode. That's why I can't do that. So you need to actually get, and I don't think their chip has monitor mode. So you actually have a chip that's Linux compatible with monitor mode. And so I have an external one, USB, I can plug into a Raspberry Pi and that will work. Uh, but I can't plug it into the Librem 5. The Librem 5 has what it has. It may not work. But this app I just showed you will work on it because it does not require monitor mode or promiscuous mode. Or just standard. It, it doesn't even require. The Wi-Fi isn't even important there. It can attack wired too. You can be wired, wireless. I'll attack anyone in the area. So, so if you want to test my skills... Yes, I believe it will be compatible with AT&T Lenny PR. I believe it will be compatible with uh, with uh, T-Mobile. The issue is Verizon. Verizon wants to approve every single device. So if Verizon does not approve the device, then there's the problem. You may have to wait till they approve the device. Is the Pine Phone 64 comparable to Librem 5 when it comes out? Saeed, the uh, Librem, uh, the Pine Phone. Uh, we'll have a hardware switch. However, the the uh, the chip used for the Pine Phone can you capture Bluetooth? Yes. Yeah, uh, DJ Murdoch. Yes, I have not. That's not something I've been working on. But uh, again, you need a. Okay, I'm not in California anymore. P penetration should be difficult. Okay, so back to uh, 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 back to the Pine Phone. The, so the Pine Phone is is uh, kind of like a Raspberry Pi processor. So, you know, don't expect to do anything that requires much more power than a Raspberry Pi. So, is that okay for for a Pine Phone? Actually, it is for many things, and it'll work. You know, websites does that. So, Pine Phone will be good for that. Uh, can it do anything like heavy duty? Probably not, because you know it's it's probably going to be sluggish just because CPU is uh, is not so powerful. So, so the Pine Phone is cheap. Well, their pricing though is just for developers. We don't actually know what the final price is. They're pricing at one forty nine, but that's a developer price. So, I don't know what the price will be when it actually comes out. So let's say they sell for 200 bucks. Is that going to work? Uh, it's going to be like a Raspberry Pi. So is that worth it for a Raspberry Pi for 200 bucks? Sure. 
Uh, the Librem 5 is more of a real computer. So uh, the Librem 5, you can plug it into a monitor and use it as a normal desktop Linux. It's kind of exciting that you can do that. It's like a normal computer. So, uh, you know, and put it on the phone. So when you travel, you can create your own software, load it on the phone and use it like the stuff I did. I can create many, many kind of apps. Will you get a Pine phone when it becomes available, uh, Donnie? Yes, absolutely, well, I will get one. I will review everything I can review, uh, Saeed, but uh, don't have anything yet. So, I, you know, I, I, uh, I, Pure, Purism did ask me for, you know, which, which batch I want to be in. And a lot of people put themselves in the later batch. I put myself on A, B, and C. So uh, the C batch is like December. So even if they uh, get to the C batch, it'll be December. So I don't know. Maybe somebody will kick themselves out of the first batch and they can't sell enough to the first batch. I'll take it. I'll take it in the first batch. Too late for love, Rob. How are you doing, my friend? So anyway... Uh, um so back to back to what i'm talking about with this topic it's kind of frustrating because here we are kind of a point here where we almost have to rethink our use of the cell phone because my gosh i mean if we can't even be assured of any kind of privacy with it uh with all these back doors it, it's disgusting so I, I was so worried for years about my Intel processor having a back door. And I was a lot happier when I was able to buy several computers now, like this one here. I'm running an HP over here laptop. And this one does not have Intel IME on it. So, so this one does not have the management engine. So the newer the newer consumer products typically will not have IME on it so they finally started to listen so i'm i'm uh i'm uh you know i need to cut down uh, uh there you go maggie why not get one of those purism laptops why not get one of those purism laptops yes uh, uh donnie but they're expensive and they're slower so since I got these ones without IME on it, the whole point of the Purism laptop was to not get IME, and these new ones do not have IME. So yes, I was actually, way back when, Donnie, I was looking at System76. I was going to order a System76 some years back, like three years ago, and they were like selling for 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks, something like that, which is kind of expensive for a laptop. And uh, they didn't have any in stock. They didn't have any in stock. You couldn't buy one. Couldn't buy one. So then I didn't order it. And then the year later, then they came up with some of these that do not have uh, uh, IME. Is your System76 running Linux? Can you put the mask on? So... Uh, uh, by the way, guys, thank you for watching on YouTube and uh, uh, appreciate the fact that uh, there are more people on YouTube now watching. In fact, they're equal to Periscope. <clears throat> I'm so uh, I'm so stoked by the fact uh, that uh, my YouTube channel is finally uh, blowing up. So, Kelp, I may have to stop Periscope here, so you may have to go to YouTube. With all that Snowden... Uh, you think the Librem will be immune for long? Uh, no, that uh, what didn't you not listen to me, uh, Kelp? This, the Librem is not immune. What's my YouTube name? <laughs> That's the YouTube logo, right there. You must not go to YouTube. I know Maggie's not very techy, so there you go. That's a YouTube logo. I, I can't imagine you don't go to YouTube for your age group. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen a uh, a uh, young young millennial that uh, doesn't know what YouTube is or know. Uh, I thought most of most of the young people like you know you live off YouTube. 
You've said that before about dropping Periscope. I'm the only one that f prefers this comment section. Yes, Kelp, this comment section is apparently for you, but it doesn't help uh, anybody else. So, so uh, yeah, most of my action is coming uh, uh, from uh, from YouTube now. So I don't get any more growth in in uh, subscribers, uh, followers on on Periscope. None. I do not get anything, nothing on uh, on Periscope now. Periscope is basically just our old friend. So I don't get any new people on Periscope. So uh, it's starting to, uh, you know, be secondary. Maybe at some point I don't even watch the comments on Periscope. So kelp will, uh, will be ignored if it comes to that point. I may only pay attention to comments on Periscope on YouTube and a lot of the people who are going to Brax Me now are from YouTube. So for, for those of you who are kind of new to this, uh, I do have, you know, a platform that I made and yes, it's not popular, you know, so if you're going to say it's not as popular as Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter, you're right. But I made it and it's mine and it's, uh, I own it. Uh, I'm the only owner of it. It's completely encrypted. I made it for that reason. It's encrypted conversations. Everyone on uh, Brax.me is into privacy, and uh, and uh, you know we, we don't have that many people on there. I think uh, under ten thousand people on uh, on Brax.me. Do you care? You know, if you don't care about that, come on in and go chat. And uh, and uh, you know, if you're interested in anything we're talking about and want to have a a place where you can talk about in private with the same group of people here. Uh, do so on Brax.me and it's uh, free and you don't have to identify yourself. And if you uh, you want, you don't even have to give an email. So not, it doesn't force you to do anything. You can identify yourself as much as you want or as little as you want. And you can create content in there and so on. And, and, uh, it's, uh, and it's free. So And that's where actually where I do the tech support for VPNs. All of these products, my stores, all of that is actually accessed on Brax.me. So it's my own platform. In case you know, you don't know that I can do that kind of programming too. Is there any software that you can install to to stop backdoor hacks? Uh, not these kinds of uh, not uh, uh, Maggie sailing season ended already. Uh, Saeed, the answer, the, the answer, Saeed, is that uh, the attacks I just talked about, which is IME, the backdoor to the Intel processor, as well as the attack on uh, a phone using SIM jacking or SS7, these are called out-of-band attacks. They're going to use a different band. So you can't detect them. Somebody said, could, you, could I block them with a firewall? No. Because they don't go through the firewall. They go through the other chip, which you do not control. So uh, the only way to stop them will be from an external network control, which you cannot do on a phone because it's coming in from the radio. So no, that, that's why there's no solution to this. This is why I'm so upset because there's no solution. No, I, I did a, uh, in Lighten Up, I did one sailing video, that's it. I didn't, I didn't uh, you know do any sailing scopes so that app I just showed you this little app I did here is made to actually catch any hackers on the network so I did this to catch hackers in the network that's what the app is about it's a catch to catch the hacker and then to block them uh, it can. It doesn't just catch the hacker. It can actually attack the hacker. So this one is made to attack the hacker, and uh, so I built it because the, you know it's kind of handy to have something where you don't have to run f Wireshark, and there's a quick way to detect things that get quietly happen, uh, such as um, such as um, uh, keyloggers and. Uh, remote access trojan so if you don't know what a remote access trojan is it's somebody that loads software on your device where you don't actually uh, where it watches everything you do 
So I wanted to be able to, to spot those kinds of, of devices. Can I spot somebody doing key logging and so on? That's what I made this app for. And then that app allows me to attack whoever it is on my network as I search for them physically with one of these. So, with one of these. Now, unfortunately, they're not going to get hurt if I use this since it only fires uh, airsoft. But uh, <clears throat> I can try to. I can try to hurt them. I'll shoot them in the ear. Put that away. I'll shoot them in the ear. Is there any? So anyway. Um, so anyway, uh, we will. Uh, uh, I will make a short video explaining what I just talked about today. I already wrote it, so I'll put this in a very short, ten-minute video. So for people who do not like to watch the uh, the long form. So you, you get to share it to, to other people on Facebook and so on. So uh, demonetized. Uh, nope, Rick, I show it every time. I haven't been demonetized yet. You're allowed to show guns on, on, uh, on uh, YouTube, especially toy guns. There's no rule that you can't show real guns or toy guns. That's not under rule. Uh, okay, so anyway, thank you guys. Thank you, my friends. And uh, you get demonetized for music, Rick. If I play music here, I'm going to get demonetized. I might get demonetized for the music I just played. I may have to delete that. I may have to delete that. So, uh, so guys, plan on, uh, plan on these products that I made to protect your household without... without... Uh, uh, eliminating your privacy and as you can see they're well-made products uh, made in America and uh, I'd be appreciative of you consider that for the holidays and we'll have uh, we'll have stock in a couple of weeks the music is the worst used to give me so many issues when I streamed yep Carefully crafted, crafted, and cared for. As arbitrary as they are with demonetizing, you shouldn't poke the YouTube bear. Yes, you get demonetized for uh, for music. Yeah, that's the number one cause of demonetization is music. Uh, some of my videos have been demonetized for music. Yes. So if I play uh, any kind of tune that's recognizable, like. One of our friends here said, can you play Over the Rainbow? I can't. I play Over the Rainbow on this piano, I get demonetized. So I'll play on Periscope. So I can't play Over the Rainbow. I, I mean, I love to play Over the Rainbow, but I can't do it. Not on YouTube. Not allowed. So <clears throat> I, I can play some songs that, you know, are obscure and they no, no one's, you know, tracking the copyright but if it's semi-popular it's not gonna work yes kelp it does count if i sing something it will count what if you're uh if you're giving music lessons same rule mr h it's a called a composition violation yeah i've had this i can play a song now guaranteed to uh i can play one song i already got hit by this a couple times it, uh uh uh, by Dizzy Gillespie, and it, they hit me, and then I can play one by Herbie Hancock, and they'll hit me. So they hit me every time I play it. So so I'm like stuck. So I, that's why I don't play music anymore uh, on these videos. So I play music separately, and then they I don't monetize it, then they can't hit me. But still, I can't steal somebody else's video. Play an old song out of copyright. There's no such thing. They renew them. I think the only things you can play out of copyright are like 1920s. 1920. I can play the, uh, you know, the anonymous tune because that has no copyright. The anonymous tune is, you know, no one claims copyright on that. So <laughs> no one's going to say, that's my tune. 
So, classical music. Yeah, you can play music on Periscope. So, and yeah, I could grade gold, but uh, what's the point? So, you got to have a point. So, I'm, I'm uh, very busy doing all these videos, you know, and then apps and products. I'm, I'm like... Uh, I'm like a crazy person here, busy bee, trying to uh, trying to do all this so, so that I can uh, so I can uh, make a living. Because kelp doesn't believe that we have to make a living here. So yes. So if you think that we are making money from advertising here on YouTube, no, no. Uh, we make a hundred bucks on advertising. A hundred bucks. So that's it. On a good on a good month. Can you start YouTube five minutes later after music? I can't. Too much trouble. Too much. Too much coordination. I don't have time to go set it up. Right, this is all pre-set up in a certain way. While watching short videos, please watch and let the ads complete themselves. Thank you. Also. Uh, you know, a lot of you watch the watch me on YouTube and don't hit the like button. Uh, would really appreciate it if you do. There's 31 of you here. Maybe all 31 of you will hit the like button. That would be fantastic. We got to get the uh, algorithm to appreciate the channel. Please, all of you that are on the channel right now on YouTube, all of you, please hit that uh, like if you like it, or hit the dislike too. Uh, hit the like or the dislike, but hit something, because the, they uh, they measure from activity. Ready have thank you, Mr. H. You're awesome, Mr. H. Smash that like button, yes, smash it. I like. I need to turn on the notification so I'm not late. We'll do it now. Thank you, Tib Coast Tibs. Hey, Tibs. Liverpool, Lady Liz from Liverpool. Thank you, Chuck. Who you, your music intro is very important. It brings to the forefront the very thing missing from everyone's life. It serves to ground us and to begin the convo on a fair level. Hitting the like button. Thank you. Yes, the like button is for the algorithm. Yes, I appreciate that, Chuck. You know, I'm a musician, so I appreciate it. Uh, you know, it it. It's, uh, I used to be able to, you hear the sirens, they're f picking you up kelp in uh, Black Tahoe's. Uh, I used to, you know, play a lot of music on, uh, on, uh, on my broadcast, but now I do it on the jam sessions, which very few people watch. So I do do the jam sessions on, on Periscope only, and very few people watch them. So which kind of gives me no incentive. Tahoe's for kelp. Black, black Tahoe's for kelp. <laughs> Do you really farm seaweed? <laughs> Holistic Dev. Are you in Florida now? Holistic Dev moved to Florida. I saw her uh, broadcast all packed up. All pack, holistic devil, all packed up, ready to go to Florida. Tahoe's for Monkey Man. It's a long story. How are you doing, Deb? Deb is like, uh, she she will talk to you on Brax Me and then uh, answer you like six months later. Oh, still some weeks away. Oh, okay. Because I saw you packed up already. Please remind us on the Brax the day before your jam session. Yes, the next one is October 8th. So I, I will try to remind, if I remember. Sometimes I'm not even remembering myself. So Holistic Dev will uh, talk to you. We'll start the conversation, and it's hard to respond because she may not check the answer. The answer will be dated, and the next response will be six months later. <laughs> oh, gosh. <coughs> Come on, Deb. You got to get, you know... Got to go back and forth for a conversation. You can't have a conversation when you go drop in and then leave. So anyway, thank you, my friends. Does the Lear Librem 5 phone have my antennas and how many? Uh, my Librem 5, I don't have a Librem 5. Uh, I ordered one 
Said, I don't have one. I believe uh, m- most new uh, most new b- boards uh, are MIMO. Uh, even this is MIMO. Even the new uh, Wi-Fi routers are MIMO. Your scope tonight is the only scope I tweeted out in a week. It's the only scope I had in a week. <laughs> and lighten up, I didn't have any other scope. When the 5G network comes out, can we avoid it by not using it with our phones or routers in our homes? Uh, you know, we may have to come up with some alternate way of communicating when the time comes. I do not like this 5G, no. I wonder if we need to build Faraday cages around our homes. Mad Cow, have you seen new construction? You know, my... Uh, uh, if you see some of my videos, there's a house being built across the street. And when you see it's a stucco house, and if you see all the metal, it's like a metal cage because of all the the wire for the stucco. And I said, it's kind of like a semi-Faraday cage already. That's why your your house doesn't really transmit the Wi-Fi too well outside of the home. They're already semi-protected. It's actually transmitting out your windows. So... What is that phone? It's a zucking iPhone that I want to get rid of. It's an iPhone. This is a Librem 5 that came out of the factory. That started shipping. And you can see how chunky it is, right? It's a little chunky. But it's not as chunky as I thought it would be. I thought it would be chunkier than that. So it's chunky, but not extreme. So I'm actually, because uh, I was expecting like half an inch. That doesn't look like half an inch. Uh, Holistic Deb, if you ordered one, it would take, uh, you wouldn't get one till, you know, June, <laughs> summer, summer next year. So they don't have the many of these yet. So you can't really, uh, if you order them, they don't have the, that that it takes that long to get one but this is the the uh only safer phone that's available so i'm i already ordered one and uh it has a hardware switch so you can turn off the phone uh i don't think it's going to be heavy but it's the bulkiness because there's if you look at the uh construction there's two layers of uh See that? There's two layers of chips there, because the uh, the the uh, cell baseband is on top, and then the Wi-Fi, so that adds to the thickness. Do you buy every new phone iPhone? Not anymore. I stopped buying iPhone, so this is the last one. This is the last one I bought, iPhone 10. I do not have a XS or 11. And I don't intend to buy one. So it's a little thicker, as you can see from that. So and that's the reason for the thickness. And it's not going to function exactly like your iPhone. You you know your iPhone will have uh, you know your iPhone will be like uh, you know modern compared to to a phone that may seem old to you, but that's not. That's not the uh, the problem, and the stuff is the what I can do with that. That is a zucking desktop computer on a phone. That's a du- zucking desktop computer. Plug in the USB uh, USB C in the bottom to HDMI monitor, and you got a full computer. Then use a Bluetooth keyboard. That's a whole computer. I care more about functionality. I carried 55 <laughs> pounds of camera. How much does it cost? That one I paid uh, uh, 700 bucks. So I bought it for 650 plus tax. The tax so it turned out to be 710 with tax. 
I think they're selling it at six ninety nine, and where you are, Deb, it's probably no tax, so it's probably six ninety nine for you. So seven ten for me because they're a California company. So so I got taxed the ten percent. So like you know, sixty some bucks of tax. So yeah, sixty sixty some dollars of tax. So uh, that I had to pay. So. Uh, for it to have band 71, uh, I believe it supports every band. Uh, you, you have a choice of which, which chip you want to put on it, uh, but uh, it, it should support every, uh, every U.S. band that I've seen. Did you give you the full spec on the hardware? Yeah, they gave you the full spec on the hardware. Does it work like an iPhone? I've only used an iPhone for years. Their uh, holistic dev. The the difference is the in the apps. Yeah, it you know you can do the same standard things as a phone, texting and so on. But it's not an iPhone, so there's no iPhone apps. You can't run Periscope on it. You can run anything that's a Linux app on it. So it's kind of like a desktop computer on a phone. But it can't be spied on. There's no Apple. There's no Google. None of that spying occurs. There's no location tra tracking. You can turn off the Wi-Fi with a switch. You can turn off the baseband with a switch. So it's the only device that I know of that uh, is the most secure uh, for external surveillance. Uh, so it's a PC phone computer, yeah. Maybe Periscope will make a Linux version for itself. Well, you can go to periscope.tv. Great gold. That that works. So I, I'm I'm just uh, you know I'm excited to get it because because it's a computer. I I'm a techie. I you know if I can write my my own programs on the fly, it's very hard to write an app. As you know, I wrote apps for this. There's no facial recognition. There's not even fingerprint. There's nothing. It's just, you know, punch your key code. There's no biometric on it. So uh, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's a, you know, it would seem basic to some of you that expects, you know, some of the new stuff. Uh, but it does have a good camera. It has a 13 megapixel uh, camera on the back. And then the, the front one is 8 megapixel. It's not bad. So, you know, cameras at least are good quality. So, but there's no way to really spy on this because it's just, it's a Linux phone. So it's kind of like, you know, like a real computer. So, yeah. Anyway, it I, I'm, you know, I'm telling you there's, if you saw what apps I did with this, this app that I showed you here, that would be banned on iOS and Android. You can't run this app on iOS and Android. Why? Did you see me do the jamming on there? Did you, did you watch me do an, a, uh, I guess this way. Did you watch me do an attack on it? <laughs> which which one is going to, is iOS or Android going to allow me to do an attack? No, they're not going to, but I can do it on this. I just demonstrated that I can attack you with this app that I just built here. Pretty awesome that you can do it. So, so you can't do that on iOS and Android. So that's the kind of unlimited That's a jam session, Maggie. Jam session. Anyway, guys, so uh, appreciate the, uh, the watch time here and appreciate the hitting the likes on, on, uh, on the broadcast. And uh, we will be back. Uh, sh that's the reason we may not want it. Which one did it? What's the reason? Enlighten up? I, I miss that. Yeah, so so the uh, the the power I get. By the way, the hacker is not going to install what I just did. You install it. So the fact that you can install anything you want. No, no, enlighten up. I attack you with a Linux phone. You can't attack. No, no, no. I can attack any phone with that. I can attack any phone. With uh, with um, uh, with the uh, with this app. In fact, I can attack any device 
Will the attack hurt? <laughs> I can stop your Netflix. I can frustrate you by saying, I'm going to stop your Netflix from running. I, first, I'm going to see, what movie are you watching? Oh, I don't like that movie. Then I'll go stop your movie. So there you go. That's what it will do. But I can do that attack from any computer. I just demonstrated it on, on Linux. Okay? So anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I will uh, join you here again tomorrow for our second live stream of the week. We do two live streams a week and then videos during the middle of the week. It's just a, uh, it's just attack the, this attack the kind that maybe I might like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Deb. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for coming, guys. And uh, again, meet up on Brax.me. That's where everyone is. Thank you very much. Good night.